What's up guys? Today I've got my hands on the new kick pee. What's up guys? Brand new Android TV box in the house. This is the kick pee KP1. So this one is fully officially licensed by Google. So it's got official Android TV version 11. It's powered by the S905 Y4 quad core with integrated Mali G31 graphics. This box has two gigs of LPDDR4 RAM and 32 gigs of eMMC storage. You've got micro SD expansion and it supports up to 64 gigabyte cards. You've got five gigahertz Wi-Fi, 100 megabyte LAN, Bluetooth version five. This is running official Android TV version 11. This supports 4K 60, supports HDR10 Plus with VP9 and AV1 codec. You have HDMI 2.1, Dolby Atmos and Dolby Digital Plus. Now a quick look at what you get inside the box. So we've got a user manual, HDMI cable, a power supply, a Bluetooth voice remote, so there is a built-in microphone and you can see the Google Assistant button there as well. And we've got a shortcut at the bottom for YouTube, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video and Google Play. Now this remote is powered by two AAA batteries which are not included in the box. And last but certainly not least, the TV box itself. Now you can see the logo on top, on the front you've got a power LED light. On the side we have a micro SD card slot, two USB 2 ports and we have a reset hole. If we keep going we've got Type-C port, power socket, SBDIF audio, there's your HDMI 2.1, we've got 100 megabyte LAN and an AV port. If we keep going nothing on this side and that brings us back to the front and this is what the bottom of the box looks like. So a completely new brand, interesting box, Google certified. Can't wait to see how this one performs. So without any further ado, I'm gonna get this hooked up to my TV and capture card, and we're gonna find out exactly what this one can do. I'll be right back. Now, first of all, I ran a boot up speed test, and this TV box took 27 seconds to fully load up to the desktop from a cold start. And here is the home screen. This is Android TV version 11. Apparently it's a fully licensed version of Android TV. So this is the home page with your apps at the top and you've got many recommendations on what to watch next. And right at the bottom, you can actually customize the home screen, adding and removing sections as required. Now at the top, we've got search and we've also got a separate app section. Now, if we go to the main system settings, go to device preferences and check out the system storage info, you'll see that this box has 32 gigs of internal storage from which we have 26 gigs free to use. Now, if we go back and have a quick look in about, you will see that this box is running Android TV OS version 11. And here is more information on the security patch kernel, build numbers, etc. Now, if we go to display and sound, and have a look at HDR settings. You can see HDR is switched on, but you can, however, set that to auto if you prefer. Screen resolution, 4K 60. We've got 10 bit color space there, and it can automatically switch to the best resolution. HDMI CEC is, is supported, and these are the options you have. Now, if we scroll down, you will notice Google Assistant and Chromecast built in. Usually, the fully licensed Android TV boxes, um, Chromecast feature would work. If it doesn't, that raises alarm bells. So I've got an Android phone here. I think this is the Red Magic 7S Pro. If we tap the Chromecast button, you can see it says cast to KP1. So if I tap one of my own videos, you will see it playing in, in any second now. Happy to say that Chromecast is working absolutely fine. So that was pretty much all the main settings. Now, when I first set this box up, it asked me which apps I want to install. And these are my usual apps when it comes to Android TV. So we've got YouTube, Prime, Netflix. We've got Disney Plus as well. Airscreen, Crossy Roads and Asphalt 8. So all of these apps I usually require when I'm doing my tests. You have the Play Store as well. It's the Android TV version of the Play Store. Um, you've got Kodi, VLC, Apple TV. They're all there. You could also sideload your APKs as well. That would work absolutely fine. So no restrictions there. Now, the first thing I like to test with my Android boxes is screen mirroring. AirScreen is a free app you can download and it will allow you to mirror your iOS, your iPhone screen. And any second now, you will see your iPhone screen mirrored to the big screen. And there you go. So this is my iPhone 14 Pro. It's on the latest iOS version. And you can see screen mirroring is working with very minimal lag. Uh, it's actually not bad at all. 
Okay, so now it's time to test some 4K video samples from a USB drive. Now we don't actually have a media player pre-installed for us. Um, we're gonna have to go to the Play Store and download one. And the one I like using is VLC player that's completely free of charge, but also an opportunity to test out the microphone. The microphone is really good. You don't have to keep the button press for it to work. You just press it once, you will see a green light on the remote and the green light means you can talk. So I wanna do it again. So if I just tap on the remote once, Download VLC player. Here's VLC on the Google Play Store. Perfect. So the built-in microphone is very good quality. Google Assistant working great on this TV box. And so we're going to start off with the high bitrate 4K Jellyfish demo. So the first video clip is 160 megabits per second. And you can see it's playing back really nice and smooth with no issues. This is 180 megabits per second Jellyfish demo. High bitrate, playing back superb, no issues so far. And the real test, the highest bitrate I have on this flash drive, 400 megabits per second. And I don't expect this to play back super smooth, but let's see what happens, especially because of the limitation of USB 2. Um, you can see it stuttered and stopped and froze. So thereafter, I tested some 4K60 samples with various HDR formats. And as you guys just saw, they all played back nice and smooth. I also tested out an AV1 sample, and as you guys can see, it's playing back fine, so AV1 Kodak is also supported. Now let's move on to the 4K YouTube test, and I'm going to open YouTube by using the remote control shortcut, just for the fun of it. Awesome. Alright, we're going to do another quick voice search in YouTube. 4K video. And there you go. And as you guys can see, maximum streaming quality supported on YouTube is 4K60 with HDR. Let's see how it plays back. So it looks like we're getting super smooth 4K streaming from YouTube. Um, no stuttering, buffering issues, no drop frames. It's just clean, super nice 4K video streaming. Now as usual, I'm just gonna play a few more trailers. It's up to us. So that was YouTube. Now let's move on to the Netflix test. This is a 4K PC monitor and you can see Netflix supports 4K HDR with no issues. So Amazon Prime Video also supports 4K HDR and you're also getting 4K streaming with HDR10 on Disney+. Plus. So 4K streaming across the board and when connected to my big screen TV, Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos worked absolutely fine. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the gaming test, starting off with Crossy Roads. Now for your advanced users, DRM info shows Google Wide Find level one. And here is ADA64 where you can check out the clock speeds and you can see graphics information, Mali G31. Android version is 11 and this box does not come rooted as standard. And here are the results for the internal disk speeds. We achieved read speeds of 124 and write speeds of 87 
megabytes per second. That brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench single core score of 111 and multi core score of 327. And in the Antutu benchmark test, we achieved 108K. So let's see how that compares with the others. So here is my top Android TV box performance chart of 2024, showing you the latest TV boxes and seeing how they compare with each other. And the ranking is based on Antutu benchmark scores. And based on that, you can see that the new KickP KP1 takes position 11 on this chart with a benchmark score of 108K. Now I've also given this box an overall rating of 4.5 out of 5. So from this chart, you can see the performance scores and my overall rating all color coded to make it easier for you to read. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the new KickPi KP1. And here are my thoughts. This is an interesting box with only one caveat worth mentioning. There is only two gigs of RAM, but on the plus side, it's two gigs of DDR4 RAM, which is at least three times faster than DDR3. General performance is very good. This box supports AirPlay screen mirroring. You get 4K streaming across the board with official Android TV OS and Widevine level one certifications. And also a very decent Bluetooth voice remote to go with it. Priced at around £38, the KickP 4K streaming is actually surprisingly good for the price. This streaming box performs very well and gives you plenty of official features and certifications, making this unknown brand a pretty good contender in the streaming box world. So if you're looking for a streaming box with official ATV and decent specifications, this one is pretty good for the money. Now with all of that being said, if you want to see more of my latest and greatest unbiased tech reviews, hit the like button, sub to the channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.